That's so. a good question. I'm pissed off. Yeah. Hmm. I don't have guns at my house, but I know if I did, I'd keep track of them, and I'd know where they are. We'd put them in a toy box. No way. Not a toy box. Wow. Sounds like also just sort of questioning what, how did this happen was, has been on your mind. Any other thoughts people are having? Been waking up in the middle of the night with or anything? What if I slept? If you slept, you would. Oh, I'm, I'm hardly staying awake. I'm sleeping 10, 12 hours easy. Okay. Yeah, same. And I get up and I go back to sleep. Okay. So we'll talk about that sleep thing because that's a pretty common reaction after these incidents and we can tell you more what we've learned from other responders about that. But I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to get everything out on the table. So any other thoughts people are yes. have in your mind? I wish I would have known it was a child. That would have changed everything and I could have prepared you guys for that. I had absolutely no idea. Yeah, I'm dealing with the same sleep shit, sleep stuff. Yes. You know, and I'm, we're also trying to do what we needed to do, but that image of his eyes and just, I knew there was nothing behind him. You know, he was gone. He wasn't a little boy anymore. Um, and of course, there's anger and there's, you know, it's just sad. It doesn't matter how he got the gun. I mean, yeah, it does matter, but in that moment, it didn't matter. It had happened, and, it, and he was gone. He was, he, he was gone. I keep trying to think if I did everything I could have. So kind of thinking over the call and... Oh, well, especially being caught behind the ball initially and, you know, not having the equipment that T and I really needed right away. And it was just like, automatically I was. But you know it didn't matter. You know it was, it was done when we were at the door side. I mean, as soon as any of us showed up, it was. You always yeah. hope, but. And then as you, as you guys were leaving with them, I heard the father on the phone with another, I assumed a relative and, I mean, they, they were thinking he was breathing because they were giving him air, and uh, he said something like, "What? Well, he's breathing, and uh, so that's good, and, and I thought, it's not, but I didn't want to take away his hope. Yeah. Sounds pretty tough. Uh, has everybody gone back to work ever since this call? I mean, have you done shifts? Everybody's done shifts. No, not yet. No, I was off. So in addition to what happened and what you think about what happened, another piece that makes these incidents hard for people is they're, they're kind of the worst moment. Um, their, their reactions to it. And I'm wondering um, if you can share a little bit about sort of how you're reacting to it now, what you're, um, you know, what, what sticks with you is the worst part of this, that one worst moment. It's just, just him laying there and uh, how angry towards the parents. It's their job to take care of them, and they didn't. So anger at the parents and sadness. What else? I think if this was <coughs> my wife and I's son, how we would cope with that and be able to manage it. So I just don't think we could. I don't think we could go on. I have a, a nephew that's that age, mm -hmm. and I think a lot about his parents and what they would do and I, I don't think they could manage it either. Mm. Yeah, my, my, same age as my grandkids, you know. Like. <clears throat> so I hear one of the things that's hard about this is you go immediately to thinking about your own children that are in your lives and feeling like in some ways, well, 
imagining what it would be like, really. Okay. I'm kind of horrified. I kind of am hearing. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I, I, go ahead. I felt really bad for the brother. The, he, that nobody was really tending to him. That he was, he was just sitting in a corner, oh. crying, but kind of in shock. And I just felt really bad that um, he was just kind of left out there to fend for himself. That oh. he didn't really understand what had happened. I saw, even though I didn't get to see the child that you guys were working on. Um, I really felt that there was like almost like two victims here that this other mm -hmm. kid was I felt really bad for him and spent a lot of time with him and have been wondering about what happened to him so mm -hmm. that was kind of that was my part in the whole thing was really worrying about him mm -hmm. I felt terrible for him okay. for me I, oh, yeah. no, it's okay. I think I had four bad moments for me, the screaming when I first picked up the phone, the constant screaming, <clears throat> the fact that I couldn't verify the address, so I was hoping I was sending you guys to the right place, um, then the gun, and then to hear it as a child, I mean, it was just compound after I mean, mm -hmm. a lot. Just four moments. Yeah, of for me it was unfolding best. moments. Yeah, of worst part. Yeah. So I heard you. Sit, talk earlier about um, uh, the fact that if you had more information, uh, maybe you could have done your job better. Is do you have feelings of of um, not being able to do your your best or to Absolutely. help everybody? Because I don't think these folks would be as traumatized if I had had more information. How does everybody else? Even if I'd heard it was a response. child, even if I'd heard it was a child right away, um, I probably would have assumed in my head and walked in thinking it was an adult, because mm -hmm. I think we just hear about gun-related injury and think at least older child, right? At least adult-sized person, mm -hmm. and so there's that split second at the doorway where I'm like, that's not the right patient, no. right? And you're kind of like, well, clearly I'm here for this person because they're doing CPR, right? The brain gun. But I was thinking, no, there's got to, you know, I kind of did that pause and looked back, like, isn't there somebody? So, you know, we know that the information coming up on the screen may or may not be what's happening because people are crazy when they're calling, but you get in your own head the norm you know? yeah, we saw how crazy those parents oh. were, too. And I mean, they were nuts the whole time. Mm -hmm. We were there. I can just only imagine how you couldn't get anything out of them. Right. So that's not your fault. Yeah, the amount of info you got is impressive because the two of us had to go out at the hospital and talk to the family. They were still absolutely whirled up. Um, it, I, we never found out his name until we got to the hospital. I didn't know the boy's name. I couldn't get that out of the parents. So... It doesn't surprise me at all that, in fact, I am surprised how much you were able to get out of them. I think it was great that you got him to put the gun down. Mm -hmm. I can't only imagine what it would have been like coming in and having him standing there with that gun. Mm -hmm. That could have been so much worse. Besides picturing what I saw when I was there, I, I don't know why, for some reason I just keep playing a scenario, what I think happened, and just seeing that little boy finding the gun and, and it holding it and looking at it and mm -hmm. and probably had it pointed right at his face. and So it, it really is a story that kind of keeps going on in your head that seems very real to you. Yeah. 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 That's really hard. Yeah. That's kind of the worst part for you, really, is reliving that picture. Yeah. Every time I close my eyes, I see his little face, faithless. And okay. talking to the parents, that was not something I wanted to do. Okay. Because that was very difficult talking to the parents and remembering that face. Okay. Felt like I was. Oh, sorry. Well, that's that, that's what I I just seen. I don't see any of the equipment that was used. I just see him laying there with a, you know, limp with his eyes open. And okay. 
There's a lot of pictures in your heads. So yeah. I'm, hearing. And I'm also hearing sort of a, I, I want to make sure I'm hearing this right, kind of a shock, like the scene didn't make sense, kind of going in, you couldn't believe it. Did I get that right? Yeah, and I felt like, and now it makes sense, I was probably one of the only people, at least initially, to even understand physically what had happened, right? So I opened that airway and I'm like, oh, and it starts to click, like, all right, I heard that there was a gun involved. I still can't imagine with that kind of injury, did he do it to himself? How, did, how does that happen, right? I know that there's not going to be an answer, but, uh, you know, does, was, it a, 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 was there a parent? Was there a, the other brother? How does the, this happen on his own? And, and it was a mess. I mean, there was no way. I, I know you couldn't see it on the outside, but there was, there was no way to survive that. Talked at the ER with the staff about it because I just I couldn't understand how how that happens. You know, it's just it's terribly sad. I just feel mm -hmm. it's really hard. Are there any other worst yeah. moments before we move on? Anything else you want to get out on the table about this? Well, one of the reasons we come together like this to do this is not only to get everything out and talk to the others that were there and kind of share the reactions, but also to talk with you a little bit about um, what are common reactions after the event. And so I'm wondering, what have you guys been noticing about yourselves in the days that followed this? I've heard some sleep. A lot of you have talked about difficulty sleeping, um, feeling sad. Are there other... Um, things that you're noticing about yourself uh, as a result of this event? I feel like I'm disconnected. I'm, I, I can't focus at all. Okay. Um, just on basic stuff. Mm -hmm. So focus, disconnected. <sighs> Irritable. Irritable? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Looking for someone to blame. So yeah. that mad is coming out as irritable. Yeah, and i kind of been wavering back and forth between irritable. I, I, I'll yell at my kids if I even see them go near my room. And I just scream, you know, and they're, they're like, whoa. <laughs> and, and then I'm hugging them, and they're like, okay, let go. Okay. okay. Anything else you're noticing? been through some of these instances before in mm -hmm. 20 years of doing this and um, my tendency is to try to isolate myself and not talk about it so coming here is not my favorite thing to do. I bet. <laughs> um, and that causes a lot of trouble at home too because my wife wants to talk about <coughs> what's going on with me because I'm mm -hmm. not as interactive as I am and so we have a lot of trouble around these instances like that where yeah. she wants to support me and I just push her away. Got it. I haven't been able to eat. Okay. It's just it's like my stomach shut down or something. I don't know. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> I keep going back to a couple other things that have happened in the past that, that were just kind of similar to this. It didn't involve a child, but it involved um, a suicide of a, an older child who's 15 year old, so I keep thinking back to that all the time. <coughs> <coughs> you too. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about these reactions that you're having, and let's talk about um, things to think about in terms of helping you get through this. Obviously, this is a really awful event that you've been through, probably one of the worst for some of you. Um, and it's pretty typical, as we meet with responders after events like this, that they have these kinds of reactions that you're talking about. Um, one, of the th reason, one of the things that we understand is that you were, everybody was given it your all in this situation, and you were all probably pretty pumped up to address this emergency situation. And um, it takes some time for those stress hormones that were coursing through your body to settle and to get out of your body. It takes a couple of days, actually. And so some of the things that you're experiencing, some of the sleep, difficulty, some of the eating difficulty, 
um, that is sort of a physical response that we have to these very stressful situations. Um, and so one thing that we think is, you know, it seems like, duh, like common sense, but it's such an important time to take good physical care of yourself. If you had been physically injured, you would slow things down a little bit, you'd get a little extra rest, you'd take care of yourself physically. This is also a physical injury. And so, you know, one of the things that we want to encourage you to do is to give yourself a little bit of a break. Slow down a little bit. You're going to may need some more sleep as, this, as these hormones kind of move out of your body. Um, it's important to try to go easy on the caffeine because you probably don't need more stimulation than you already have. I know that's hard in your line of work, but it's an important thing to think about, you know, to try to stay away from the, the sugars and the things that will pump your system up. Um, usually in about three to five days, people find that they begin to return to a kind of a, their normal um, level of, of arousal. You've talked about, many of you have talked about the images in your head and the pictures in your head. So one of the things that we've learned about those pictures and those images is it's actually your sort of brain and your body trying to come to grips with this particular situation. So you had referred to how it was kind of shockingly, you couldn't make sense out of it. Most of you, in some one way or another, referred to the fact that you didn't quite get what was happening. It was a very shocking kind of a situation. So it takes time for us to cognitively um, take in the reality of this situation. And one of the ways the brain does that, sad to say, is, well, there's two ways. One is it pops pictures out you to, it's like a neon sign. Think about this, make sense about this, don't forget this happened, figure this out. And sad to say again, it often comes at night or when we're least expecting it. It's a very unpleasant symptom. I have some thoughts about what you can do about that. The other thing our brains do is something that you referred to, which it, our brains say to us, oh, terrible, terrible situations involving children that have died or suicide. Here, I have a whole filing cabinet filled with incidents that I've been out to out on before. And your brain is bringing the memory of those incidents out as a way to try to help you think about how you coped in the past. It's not always a really helpful thing for your brain to do, but it's what your brain is, was built to do. So that's why these things are happening. And it can feel, people have talked about how it feels like you're going out of your mind. And you know maybe this is the one that's breaking you, but that's not what that is. This is a very normal reaction to a really shocking situation. Um, what we have learned by talking to other responders over the years is that um, if you, ironically, allow yourself a time to think about this, preferably during the day, maybe you know when you're at your most rested, to sit yourself down and spend 10 minutes every day thinking through, looking at the images in your mind, thinking about it, that in some ways this gives your brain and body what it needs to process the event, but not have to pop out at you, you know, when you're trying to go to sleep. So that's one of the um, ways we encourage people to try to, to cope with this. And usually those kinds of reactions will pass in a week or two. Did you want to add something? Or? Okay, all right. If they don't, if it continues to happen after maybe two weeks, um, what, what may be happening is you kind of have it stuck in the pipes, as I kind of think about it. Um, and you may want to reach out and do a little extra talking, maybe to some of your buddies, maybe to, I don't know if you've got chaplains, maybe to somebody on the CISM team. Um, but it might, you know, if it doesn't go away in a couple of weeks, it might be a sign that you need to take another step and get this processed completely. Um, what, so what else have, did they mention that we should talk about? Well, I, I would just like to add from my own personal experience that this incident is going to make you all better responders. Once you get it figured out, <laughs> once you can put it in the file cabinet, like Sue said, it's going to be a resource for you to be able to come back and become a better police officer, a better paramedic, a better dispatcher. Um, but the process, like Sue said, of you guys filing this in that cabinet is difficult. And that's why we do this, is so that you can, won't be worse because of this, but will be better responders. But there's one thing that I'll say about what you're saying, which is it's really common that people, I don't want to deal with this. This is horrifying. This is so sad. This is upsetting. And so what people do is they just don't want to deal with it. They put it away. And a lot of ways people put it away is going out to the bars, you know, refusing to think about it. And that kind of stuff actually, and I know this is a difficult topic, but that kind of stuff actually can elongate the reaction that you're having 
and it can elongate and even interrupt the way in which you store the memory of this in your brain. And so um, what I often say to people about alcohol around times like this, we, we crave, I mean, we want to have a drink to kind of soothe us and calm us down. Um, but actually, this isn't the time to be uh, drinking. Uh, we should be drinking alcohol when we're celebrating, when we're at times of happiness. This would not be a time when, when using alcohol is going to help you in the long run. I know that's controversial, so <laughs> you may want to talk to your peers about that, but I did want to put that out there as one of the sort of best practices of, about coping with this. Is there any way to kind of get over that, that angry feeling at the parents? Um, that's where that's what I've been feeling on is just this anger towards them. What's going to happen to them? Is something going to happen? And what comes of this? Is this just done now? It's just a oops a daisy. My kid just died. And that's where I'm left. Does anybody have any information on what's happening?